Hello, welcome to the Story in Life podcast. Uh, David and and Dale. <laughs> well, today uh, we realized David and I realized that once again there's something we don't necessarily agree upon. So uh, we're going to talk about a little uh, some something that happened this week. You know, and that is that a few days ago Paul Walker died, and when I heard this, I was I was just hit. You know, I, you know, I, I, I kind of, I felt sad, and I called up my sister, and <laughs> and uh, a lot of my friends messaged me on Facebook, and you know, it was, it was meaningful to me. It was, you know, it was significant, and I was, you know, I started to wonder why. Meanwhile, David didn't, yeah. <laughs> I, I had somewhat of a different experience. I've never actually seen any of the Fast and the Furious movies. I think I saw the end of number one, and I've seen bits of Tokyo Drift because it's mm -hmm. been shown all over the place. Um, yeah, but I started hearing about Paul, I heard about Paul Walker dying, and I was like, "Well, who the heck is Paul Walker?" I'm like, "I, I, I," because I first heard it was a couple different CUC friends posted. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, is Paul Walker somebody went to CUC? So I went and looked at my mug books. I'm like, well, I don't know who this Paul Walker guy is. And then I started looking around. Then I Googled it because mm -hmm. it kept showing up in my feed again and again and again. And, oh, Paul Walker, Paul Walker was the star of the Fast and the Furious films. And because I've never seen any of them, I've never heard of Paul Walker. And so, yeah, it, it didn't mean anything to me. And I've it, it's... I actually resonated the most with a friend who posted um, something about the the huge outpouring of grief over Paul Walker's death and the, the complete lack of any expression about the guy that was actually driving the car with him and died. Yeah. And so I'm like, what the heck, same as I was when Steve Jobs died. And I am... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enough said, but yeah. It, it, it seems to me like overblown hype for somebody who's for the death of a symbol rather than the death of an actual person. Yeah, I mean, so, and I guess the, the question I immediately that raises for me was, well, first is, how is the death of a symbol different from the death of a person anyways? Um, considering, well, not to go there, but I, I think what I'm going to have to do is, is explain what he meant to me. Because, you know, me too, I, I've always kind of been of, of the idea, you know, when, you know, so what, a celebrity dies, uh, it doesn't affect me personally. Yet, in this case, it obviously did. So, I think I just have to say why. <laughs> and when I think back about it, there's there's two sides to this. One is how the f story connects to me. And one is how watching the story connects me to my family. And I think I can do a very quick, basically just the broad strokes of the Fast and Furious and give you a, an idea of what it's about. Um, when the first, I mean, first of all, this is a movie about car culture. And what does that, that mean? What does that mean? Well, the types of people who who work their jobs in order to buy cars and then work more jobs in order to buy parts for their cars then work more jobs in order to buy tires because they're wearing out all their tires. Oh, okay. Racing. So you it's know? like climbing culture. It's like climbing culture, but it's car but with culture. Cars. Okay, but with that cars. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, and and they get together at meetups, they get together at rallies, they have you know social circles centered around garages, you know, and you know the the gods of the culture are the guys who are amazing drivers and the guys who are amazing mechanics and tuners, you know, and the people who are respected are those who have an encyclopedic knowledge of cars, modified cars, you know, engines that can go into different cars, everything like it's there's no limit to what you can know, and some people are freaking amazing, huh. <laughs> and. And the Fast and the Furious movie begins with, uh, well, I'll say the character of Paul Walker uh, is an undercover agent, very much alone in the world. He's been undercover for four or five years, and he has to watch everything he says. And he has all these friends, because he's, what he's doing, he's investigating a group of, of thieves who make use of fast cars. And mm -hmm. he's trying to get into them. And, and in doing so, he he's making friends, but he's not real, you know, he he's undercover so his his friendships aren't real all of his personal connections with these people he's unsure of he doesn't know who he is at all anymore and and he really loves and you know admires and respects the people that he's out to get even as he has to keep on telling himself that he's actually a cop and 
not you know and he builds connections with their fam like with the family of the people he's after actually falls in love with a girl but he still goes through with the with the eventual bust and at the end of the last scene of the movie Is this gonna ruin the movie for me no 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 okay you know he he actually gives he he lets the he lets the guy get away Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel's character. I think I've seen that. Yeah, you said you'd seen the the end of the first yeah. movie. You know, he he lets him get away, and and it's still you know, and and over the next course of the you know, the, the movie goes different directions after that. But in the fourth movie, it it comes back to the same story where uh, the family that Paul Walker had connected with, you know, had um, event. I mean, they had been involved in other things, and one of them they'd been out, they'd left the country, and. Vin Diesel's character or his his girlfriend actually gets killed working for Paul trying to get Diesel cleared and they come back to the country and anyways over the course of a movie he reconnects with them and this time the connection is real like he actually becomes um you know he actually does know who he is they know who he is the the friendship is real his connections are real and the end the movie ends mm. with with um you know them all having survived and they're back at the Toretto house, you know, and, and they're having a barbecue and it's like, you know, they're people from their socials, like car people are there, you know, like it's, it's built around the community as well. Mm -hmm. And the message of the movie is, is one about the importance of family, the importance of community. Uh, and all the films are built around this, the connections, the importance of the connections between people, you know, specifically, you know, they call each other bro, um, in, you know, in a, in a very significant way. And, the premise of so many of the stories is that these people are a group of people who are not just a family but a very close family despite the fact that they might not all be related but they would do anything for each other and do so this resonated with you so it resonates with me and it also means that you know when paul walker died it wasn't just a you know when steve jobs died so what steve jobs died when paul walker died in part of my mind I'm like, oh my goodness, this family lost somebody. And, and and it wasn't just the person. I felt like I knew his whole family, his extended family, the people he'd been working with for 15 years. You know, and, and everybody that was connected to him, the way in which the story is told, they're, you know, they're all close. So it's, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. But isn't that sort of conflating the fictional reality with real life? Absolutely, 100%. Isn't that... <laughs> And so, and, and the, far be it for me to like critique that yeah. on an absolute level, but at some level it seems problematic. Like if Mila Jovovich dies, I, I love uh -huh. I love her films. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be like, oh crap, Alice is dead. What's going to happen to Resident Evil? Part of that's because the last couple mm. movies really sucked, but part of it is like, okay, it was a character. Like you know, oh, there's a bunch of good movies I've had. Life happens. We move on. Yeah, like, but I, I I don't get it. I, I I I think what I'm trying to say is that it's not just it's not just a function of the fact that he's a character in these films. It's also a function of the very specific story of these films and the way in which the importance of the connections the, and and you know and within the movies there's been two deaths um, there's been two deaths in the movies that were of okay. people who you know they weren't introduced like multi film people who were killed in tragic you know died in tragic ways that you know like in okay. similar events like I guess what I'm saying is that even with within the films a story that has created the the attitude towards um you know blood i guess like loss loss is very very strong it's such a strong part of the story that you know and the sort of respect for the respect for those who are gone and the like these i mean it's it's part of the narrative that surrounds him is that this is how you treat those that you've lost this is how you stick up with those who are around you you know like and it all, you know, when when he goes, that's the story that comes to mind. Huh. In a, and it's a story that, and, and I'll say this, you know, going back to my own, like, you know, when, when the first movie came out, I think uh, I was 16 or 17, my brother was 12 or 13, my sister was 14, 15. And it was one of the few movies that we could agree to watch, you know. And so, of course, as siblings watching this movie that has these strong messages about family, this was one of the movies that kind of, you know, got us over the, our bickering selves and connected us to each other as well. You know, and when the later movies came out, um, you know, my brother became a tuner, you know, or, you know, liked to, you know, soup up his cars a lot and did a lot of work. And, and I read books on the subject, you know, in other words, not only that, but these movies uh, precipitated significant changes in my, 
you know, interest in my life that have persisted to this day. So it's not just it's not just that the story is a movie that I've watched, is that this the stories presented in these movies are in inextricably tied up with a part of who I am because of the way in which they've impacted my decisions over the past fifteen years. That's crazy. So the so the question is, is it wrong to to be this impacted by the by what I feel like is the well, loss of a story? I don't know if that's the question. Because what is the question? I, mean, I don't. I'm trying to think about that. Because on the one hand, you know, I I recognize that it's a person that I've lost, but the stories that he have told tell me how to relate to him. Well, do they though? I mean, I I think, and that's part of my question mm. is somebody tells you great stories reading those stories back onto their life and death, I think is problematic. Mm -hmm. and yeah. it, but knowing that the actor know, himself, is that so? and I guess, I guess I could say, I also know that the actor himself was often a, you know, a technical advisor on the, on the movies. I mean, because he was yeah. very much the person, um, you know, at least in terms of his interest in vehicles and stuff yeah. that, that he is portrayed to be in. Yeah. So I, can, I guess, I mean, I can relate to it sort of in the sense of like, you know, if, if Joss Whedon were to die, I think it would be a tragic thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's, let's, but, let's say, how about, how about if there's it a was sense... um, not Joss Whedon, but uh, um, Malcolm Reynolds, what's his real name? Oh, um, Nathan Fillion. If Nathan Fillion were to die. Um, I would uh... be, see, I don't know. I, and maybe some of this is the way I approach death. Mm-hmm. I tend to be okay, people die, and, you know, I, I have not had a lot of experience with it. But yeah. still, I'm like, it happens. Like, I, I, I don't know. But, okay, but if, what if Nathan Fillion dies? I mean, he's going to someday. Yeah. I mean, he'll be dead, and it'll be sad, mm -hmm. but... It won't affect me the same way. Um, yeah. Strangely enough, even though I love those... You know, I probably, if I were to say which is greater, Firefly or Fast and the Furious, I might, I might pick Firefly. But at the same time, it, <laughs> and yeah. he was the character. Yeah, and that's that's but what I mean. Like, it, and, and it wouldn't affect me the it's same all way. About family. Yeah. And so, if he were to die at some level, the story is the same. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but the story is more or less the same about what family means. Yeah, but it also it also has a what uh, death means. I yeah. mean. I haven't joined a you know a, a spaceship flying subculture either out of it, um, and yeah. it hasn't become a part of my life in the same way. And you know, and see, and Wash's death affected me, but I mean, you know, in the same way that Wash's death in the Firefly series was pretty significant. I mean, Fast and the Furious has had two deaths like that that were that significant. You know, yeah, emotionally gut wrenching. So yeah, uh, I, and see, I'm like I think Fireflies had. I don't know if it, it's had significant impact in my life. Mm -hmm. And Nathan Fillion's work, like, I, I, I love his yeah. work. But even still, I'm just like, you know, if he died, I'd be like, okay, it's sad that somebody died. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I don't understand beyond that. Like, and maybe that's all it is. I mean, it, it seems like it's more for you. Maybe that's all it is for some people. Like when, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he played Ethan Rain on Buffy and he voiced uh, Zaid, who wasn't a major character, but voiced Zaid in Mass Effect, and he died recently. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that, I, I don't know if I posted anything about that, I may have. Just because I'm like, okay, somebody, you know, interesting has died, and there'll be, you know, no more Zaid without him. And no mm -hmm. more Ethan Rain, and, you know, Buffy's done, although Ethan Rain is back, but so I, it, I don't know, it... I guess some, at some level, this, this brings me down to the question, um, okay, I had a, there was a, one of our family friends who used to drive through every few months and show up at our house at 1030 at night, 1130 at night, bang on the door. We all wake up, get out of bed and Uncle Ingo would show up and he would sit there and we'd make him some food and he'd visit and he'd tell us stories <laughs> and, you know, and he died a few years ago mm -hmm. and it really impacted us, you know, because it was Uncle mm -hmm. Ingo. Yet at the same time, what do I know about him? I know that he would show up and I know about him and I know all of the stories he would tell us which none of which were even remotely true <laughs> you know and when yeah. I think about him I think about those stories that he told and yeah. and <laughs> you know I guess what, I, what I'm saying is uh, well this is what I'm asking myself is the loss of how is the loss we feel the loss of a person any different from I mean the loss of the symbol of who they were in our lives and I think that's an interesting question um, 
you know, and the reason I feel this loss with, answer. yeah, and the reason I feel this, you know, loss with this case is because it had an impact on my life and it still does. Yeah. Hmm. And I guess, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, yeah, there's a lot of things floating in this. I had them all clear a couple seconds ago, but... I feel like he's the storyteller. Well, and that's an aspect of it, I think, that is very interesting with modern media, is you don't have one author, mm -hmm. one authority. You have, you know, who makes a movie? Well, you Hundreds know, you pick a movie, and, and no movie is what it is without, you know, all these different people involved. Yeah. Except maybe a new Bowl movie, which just sucks because of Uwe Bowl, but... Other than that... <laughs> no idea. <laughs> in the name oh, of the king. Okay. <laughs> He's famous for me. People keep giving him money to make really awful films. Um, but yeah, you have, you know, writers, graphics people, you know, director, producer, filmmakers, actors, you know, soundtrack writers, sound effects write creators, like, all these different people. And, like, how do you say which one made the film? Yeah. You know, I mean, some of them are more or less, I think you could say some of them are interchangeable, but you, at some level, many of them are not. You know, there's those little personal tweaks that, that make the difference and make, make something what it is. Yeah, I mean, so like those guys, they all helped, but I mean, they're not the guy who, who got out of a totaled car and, 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 and uh, laughing after having just lost it in a bet and said, dude, I almost beat you. Like, like I don't know, just the... But that's, that's not the guy, though. It, I mean, that's the it character. Isn't, like, it isn't the character of the guy. I can't separate the two. Yeah. And... Okay. Well, let's let's talk supernatural because that's something okay. I know, and that's I'm I'm angry at right now. But okay. What are the main? Um, I can never remember the two actors. Anyways, it's the two brothers, Sam and Dean, and the guy that plays Dean. No, the guy. Yeah, the guy that plays Dean is is very interesting. Um, is he the former, like the student, or the one who stayed at home? He's the one who stayed at home. He's always been Dean is. Okay, yeah. Okay. Tends to be, in the movie, in the show, he's like a fairly outgoing, in-your-face sort of guy. They say the actor is, ex like, very, very shy. He's an introvert. Uh-huh. And so he's like a totally different person when he's off camera. Uh-huh. And it's interesting, because I've seen him in other shows, and he always plays this very forthright, you know... Uh, he was he was in Dark Angel, actually, mm -hmm. so you know that. Yeah, well, that's what I knew him from. That's what yeah. And he's this he's this really outgoing sort of charismatic guy uh -huh. in Dark Angel, but that's not him as a person. Oh, but to and, to me that is. Well, and um, to me that seems. And I'm saying, well, when I get up and I do stand up, I become a different person. Yeah. But that person is not a mirror, not a reflection, but it is a function of of who yeah. I am in the mathematical sense. That it's some sort of a derivative that still is meaningful. And so, what do stories connection. mean? I mean, I think stories matter, and I think there is a very much, a very real sense in that the stories we tell about ourselves are do shape us and they mm -hmm. they they do make us who we are and so it's not a clear line of distinction and yet at the same time i think there is a huge problem with you know conflating someone with the stories that are told about them mm -hmm. maybe i mean you look at a politician you yeah. know stephen harper presents a very clear story about who he is I think it's very dangerous to confuse that with who Stephen Harper is as a person. You know, Obama tells a very s clear story about who he is as as a political leader, and 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 maybe that's maybe that's what this is about. Well, is, let me is ask that another question. The hegemon, the hegemony, is is there's a point where yeah, they are that character. They are those different things they've done. You know, I am I'm mm -hmm. a part. I am all the things I've done in my life, and yet it could be very easy to take one of those aspects of my life and say that's all I am and does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I've been a teacher, I've been a chimney sweep, I've been all these different things and if you knew me as one of them and I, I you know, I were to die and you knew me as one, you could say, well, we lost this and that's, I think it's very legitimate to say that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that that's exactly the same as you know, one of my students mourning my, my death would be very different than, you know, Cheryl mourning my death. Yeah, legitimately so. And I guess I could say I went to... I don't the think you could invalidate either one, but... Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. hmm. I had a friend die the summer before last, I believe, Dwight Johnson. Oh, okay. And uh, he had, a, you know, a sudden heart attack unexpectedly. He was a very healthy guy. And I went to his funeral and everybody got up and talked about his... Uh, work on the hospice society and how he had been involved in 
and this and that. Now he'd been a guy who always sold them fruit. And it was, you know, and, and to me, Dwight was the guy that I met in the mushroom patch year after year. <laughs> and, and that I would talk with Sabbath afternoons, you know, from time to time. And we'd have these discussions. Yeah. And he was one of the first people who treated me as an, as an adult or respected my, my thoughts on, on a book, you know. Yeah. Uh, and considered them worthy of, of debate. But the person that I knew was totally different. And it was meaningful to me in a totally different way. Yeah. But... I, you know, and he was to some extent living a different life when he was living, you know, picking mushrooms. But was it not him? Okay. Maybe that's the issue. Because I think, yeah, I, 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 the, the, which is a totally different direction. Um, there's a sense in which our experience of other people and, and things is very, very mm -hmm. singular. Yeah. And very, very personal. You know, this the my relationship with you is going to be different from Skylas or Adams or yeah. you know, pick somebody that knows you. It, we all we all have see different sides of each other because of our own personalities and all these things, um, and and histories and and things like that. And there's some I don't think you can say well that's not a legitimate loss mm -hmm. because it's not the same as my loss. I think that's that's hugely problematic. And stories matter, and and losing stories matter, and losing symbols matter. I guess part of what what bugs me is it seems like our culture is so tied up in again we spend so much time mourning the loss of Paul Walker because he was famous and we couldn't care less at all less for the guy that was next to him in the car and I, I to me it seems like we I too often in our culture in, in North America we mistake um, emotional attachment mm -hmm. for relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, th there, there's a very, yeah, we're like, well, I lost so much because I was emotionally attached. Like, you know, Steve Jobs dies. Mm -hmm. He makes Apple products. Like, whoop de doo You love your iPod, and it's a loss when Steve T Jobs dies. You've lost something yeah. personally from your life. Like, and I can understand that one way or the other because that I, I don't understand his decisions. That. I'm like, yeah, you know, who he was didn't resonate with me at all. Yeah, and I'm I'm like okay, yes, something lost, but I think that's an entirely different category of loss from you know my mother died or my father died or you know pick somebody that's close to you. I, I don't you like know. Paul Walker, <laughs> but he's uh, not. I know, but I mean, and that's that's the thing. I I think we have to be very aware of that. That it, and it's not an absolute line. It's not like mm -hmm. we can just draw it clear and there's one side and the other. It's not a binary. But there is something qualitatively different from between my connection to an on-screen character, mm -hmm. and I mean, and, and my connection to somebody actually, somebody I actually live with. Yeah. And I think we have to be aware of that. I think too often we think we we try to replace our connections with people with connections with figures, and I, I think that's that's horrific because it turns out it, it ends up in this place where we mourn the figures with the loss of the figure rather than the loss of the person. As evidenced but, by the fact that we don't mourn the loss of the other person. We only see, I, mourn the loss of the figure. And to me, that's broken. Yeah, and I, I'd say, okay, maybe even hearing more about Paul Walker. I mean, I have seen a lot of people writing about the other guy as well. Um, and usually okay. people raising the same issue that you're raising, not saying we shouldn't be, but just saying let's also remember some, you know, this yeah. other guy. You know, and, and you know, so it's, it's not like we are ignoring it. And this is something I've just been thinking that, you know, one of the reasons why this is so... It's impacted is because of how it happened and what it happened and the way in which all of the connections between yeah between between his real life and the events as well. You know, like he left a, a daughter, and in the series, you know, a, a large part of the last movie was you know his wife is pregnant and his girlfriend is pregnant, and he's he's worrying that he's not going to be there for his kids. You know, like this is like one of the things he's worrying about in the movie, and and you know, and and he. And characters die in crashes in the f series that happen the same way as how he died. I mean, there's all these yeah. connections that 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 really um, blur the lines between the story and his real his actual life as well. Until well, so, life imitates art. Yeah, but that that doesn't mean life is the same. As, the life is the same as the art. Exactly. But when I look at my friends and people I've known who have died, it's their life imitates the art of how they told their lives as well and their lives imitate the art of how i know them as well so i i can't you know i yeah. 
Well, yeah, it's blurry. It's blurry from start to finish, and and mm-hmm. my conclusion is that I'm I'm going to accept it for what it is, the loss of somebody that was important to me, whether that person is Paul Walker or the character he played in the films. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. I suspect it's a bit of both. Um, but recognizing the fact that it does impact me actually has yeah. told me about the importance of a lot of other things in my life that I hadn't really realized. For example, um, the extent to which car culture impacts me, even though I'm hardly involved in it at all. Yeah. You know, and the extent to which watching those movies has shaped the way in which I view my relationship to my siblings. Yeah. I think I actually like that thought. I, I think, and maybe that's a good place to stop is, you know, for all this, because yeah, I think there's something to watch out for when we confuse symbols and people. Mm-hmm. I think that can be very dangerous. But I, I like your point that there's there's something to be said for acknowledging a loss. I mean, this ties to what we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. There's something to be said for acknowledging a loss and considering the impact of it. And yeah, yeah it, it's led you to a greater awareness of the way you live your own life. Yeah, and, and were I to say he's a celebrity, it's not a loss... I would be lying to myself. Yeah. Well, I don't think I would say that. Yeah. Quite that way. But I mean, at some, you know, yeah. that is one it's... of the possible responses that went through my mind when I heard about it. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, and the other one you could tie into this was Jack Layton. Yeah. That I was sad when Jack Layton died. Yeah. Because I think, yeah. But that's a whole different, <laughs> a whole different discussion. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a whole different situation, but it is a whole different discussion. Well, it is very different because, yeah, because I mean, he I was know. just involved in the storytelling as any, you know, as any creator well, yes. of any movie, and his story was intended to have an emotional impact, in order to change a country. Um, and that's and I, I think that's some of the difference yeah, is what he was doing had real world consequence in in a different way in a different way yeah because I in, I mean what you, yeah you talked about the real world impact of, of the story of you know, Fast and, and the Furious but there's a sense of without Jack Layton what is the NDP now yeah and I mean that's that's legitimate the party is not the same without Jack Layton and that is a big question but yeah anyways yeah. we should All end right. here um so yeah this has been a storing life podcast uh if if you found us randomly online somewhere you can find our website at townshi.blogspot.ca t-a-a-n-s-h-i dot blogspot.ca or at the storing life group on facebook thanks for listening bye-bye